So I'm here with Chris Rice, who's a Senior Director of Database Tools over in the ST Org, uh, and I sat in on his uh, Oracle REST Data Services talk this morning. Um, Chris, I'm always interested in how these things come across. I mean, sometimes it's just a project that you got bored with. How did, uh, why, why Oracle REST? What, what is it serving? Well, REST started out being called Apex Listener. Okay. We really started out originally with like a three-week proof just to see if we could do it. And it turned out that it was pretty easy to do to get the first 60-70% done. So we carried it through. We added in all the support that enables Application Express, the OA toolkit. And then after we did that, uh, REST started taking off a lot. So we brought on Colum Divley, who's brought a ton of REST knowledge and is helping build out the entire REST side of it, which is really taking off. So REST, um, explain that a little bit more, okay? I mean, it, it's obviously, it's, it's over HTTP, so you're having to deal with the whole th fact that HTTP is a, a stateless protocol. Correct. So you, you, how do you manage that state? What is REST actually doing? What does it bring to the table? So the, the power of REST is basically abstraction. So you basically abstract the data access itself. The SQL, the PL SQL lives in the database. You define these RESTful points over that and then say your JavaScript developer, or your Node.js developer, your Java developer, they only need to know what the REST endpoint looks like and what they're getting back for that contract. The actual database is abstracted for them, and they don't even have to be aware that it's a database. You could swap it out underneath it. You could swap it out and upgrade the database. They would never be impacted by these things. So one of the things that you mentioned in your talk is you use several examples from Oracle's database uh, service in the cloud. Yeah. So, um, and how you're using the Oracle REST data services to implement some of that, uh, that infrastructure. Um, it sounds like it's driving a lot of the features that you're actually building into the product. Um, can you talk more about that? It is. So with everything, more use becomes more features. So by using it as the single entry point in and out of the Oracle schema service for the database cloud, we've had to add uh, more robust uh, mapping for supporting multiple databases. We've had to add virus scanning. So it was decreed by Oracle that everything coming into our Oracle cloud would be virus scanned just to make things safe. So we naturally had to build that support in. And naturally so the, it fell on your shoulders. Of course. <laughs> so basically because we're using our own stuff in the cloud, it's going to benefit everybody. Great. So talk a little bit more about what it meant to actually build in that virus scanner. That was pretty interesting. The virus scanner is actually fairly easy to implement. So what happened is, like I said, Oracle decreed that things had to be scanned. We were the first cloud service, so we had to write this scanner. So we went to the semantic scanners and looked at how they built, how they worked, and had to uh, basically create some Java APIs that we use in the RESTful listener. And then from there, everything coming in is basically scanned, so we know that no viruses are landing in the database. So uh, the current version is 2.0? 2010. 2.0.10. Now, the other thing that you, you talked about is how much easier it was going to be to install version 3.0. Yes. Uh, 3.0, we've taken a lot of work on making everything easier, not just the install. <clears throat> so one of the things in 3.0 is we completely revamped the install. You can actually go to SQL Developer now and install ORDS 3.0, and it walks you through a wizard. It prompts you for everything you need, it validates passwords, everything, and at the end, you hit a run button and you're up and running. I don't think we can make it too much easier. Uh, the other things that are in 3.0 that makes it much easier is, in 2.0, you would have to hand code each RESTful endpoint. In 3.0, we have auto REST enablement, so you basically enable a table with one, one call, either PL SQL or in SQL Dev, and that table is completely REST enabled. Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you very much for your time, and uh, best of luck with your next presentation. Yeah.